If you look at New York State from space at night, something shocking appears immediately. In the southeast corner, wrapped around Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island, and the lower Hudson Valley, there is a blinding explosion of light. An entire galaxy of 13.8 million people, skyscrapers, highways, airports, and suburbs, all glowing like a supernova along the Atlantic coast. Now drag your eyes upward, past Yonkers, past Poughkeepsie, past Albany. The light collapses. Suddenly, you are staring into enormous darkness. Hundreds of miles of forests, snow belts, ghost towns, abandoned mills, empty highways, and rural counties with population densities lower than Alaska. In Hamilton County, there are just three people per square mile, fewer than the number of grizzlies per square mile in parts of the Yukon. 70% of New Yorkers live in just eight downstate counties. The remaining 57 counties, nearly 90% of the land, contain only 6.2 million people. Why? How did one tiny corner become a world capital while the rest faded into cold, quiet emptiness? The answer is a 10,000-year story of ice, rivers, geology, immigration, and economic gravity. Forces so powerful that modern policy can barely move the needle. If you enjoy deep dive videos like this, feel free to subscribe. It truly helps the channel. Now, let us break it down. Why 70% of New Yorkers live downstate. The population imbalance between downstate and upstate New York is one of the most extreme in the United States. Downstate, consisting of New York City's five boroughs plus Westchester, Nassau, and Suffolk counties, contains more than 13.8 million people roughly 70% of the state's entire population. Upstate, which accounts for nearly 90% of New York's land area, holds just 6.2 million. This concentration happened because downstate possesses natural advantages that upstate never had. A deep water coastline, navigable rivers, flat land, and proximity to the Atlantic trade routes. Manhattan, in particular, sits at the meeting point of a world-class harbor and the Hudson River forming a transportation hub unmatched on the East Coast. Upstate, meanwhile, is dominated by mountains, rugged plateaus, climates with heavy snow, wetlands, and protected forests. Counties in the Adirondacks and the Tug Hill Plateau face strict environmental regulations and harsh winters, making development and infrastructure expansion extraordinarily difficult. These geographic constraints naturally funneled economic growth, migration, and industry toward downstate. Over time, social, cultural, and financial networks reinforced this pattern, leaving most of New York's population anchored along the lower Hudson Valley and the coastal plain. Glaciers trapped upstate in Ice Age poverty. Upstate New York's struggles begin with geology shaped more than 10,000 years ago. During the last Ice Age, the Wisconsin Glacier covered nearly all of upstate beneath a sheet of ice a mile thick. As the glacier retreated, it scraped away fertile soil, leaving behind rocky, acidic ground filled with debris and boulders. These glacial till soils are notoriously difficult for farming and construction. Even today, preparing land for crops or for building often requires extensive clearing, liming, and grading, dramatically increasing costs. Downstate New York, especially the lower Hudson Valley, was not scoured as aggressively. It retained deep layers of nutrient-rich silt deposited by the Hudson River over thousands of years creating stable, fertile land ideal for agriculture and early settlement. The glacier also carved the Finger Lakes, beautiful but extremely inconvenient for early transportation and farming because of their steep ridges. Upstate's landscape became fragmented into isolated valleys and hills, limiting large-scale development. These Ice Age leftovers ensured that upstate began at a disadvantage. Downstate had accessible, development-friendly terrain, and upstate inherited rugged, expensive land that shaped its long-term economic path. Buffalo's 94 inches of snow versus New York City's mild winters, a killer divide. Climate creates another dramatic barrier between the two regions. Buffalo, Syracuse, and much of western and central New York lie in the heart of the lake effect snow belt. These areas regularly receive 80 to 100 inches of snow each year, with extreme events dropping several feet within days. Buffalo's infamous 1995 event buried the region under 24 feet of snow in just four days. By contrast, New York City averages about 25 inches per year and benefits from the Atlantic Ocean's warming influence. Winters downstate are milder, shorter, and far less disruptive. 
the mild winters support more continuous activity through the year. This climate divide affects everything, heating costs, infrastructure durability, transportation reliability, and agriculture. Upstate households may spend nearly $1,000 more per year on heating compared to downstate. Heavy snow also drives up road maintenance costs, strains local budgets, and shortens construction seasons. Heating is a persistent expense that weighs on households and governments alike. The harsh climate discourages newcomers and reduces the economic viability of spreading suburban development. Commuting is harder, shipping is slower, and businesses face greater risks. Downstate's milder environment allowed continuous growth, dense urbanization, and year-round economic activity. Upstate's winters, meanwhile, act as a constant break on population growth and economic expansion. Hudson River, New York City's superhighway upstate never had. For centuries, rivers were the backbone of economic development, and New York City possessed one of the greatest natural advantages in North America, the Hudson River. The Hudson is a deep tidal estuary that remains navigable to ocean-going ships for roughly 150 miles, all the way to Albany. This allowed goods, people, and raw materials to move efficiently between the coast and the interior long before railroads existed. Upstate rivers offer none of these advantages. The Genesee, Niagara, Mohawk, and others drop rapidly over cliffs and waterfalls, making them ideal for powering mills, but useless for long-distance navigation. Without a natural waterway connecting upstate to coastal markets, early settlement and trade naturally concentrated around the Hudson Valley. By the late 19th century and the early 20th century, New York City's port had become dominant, handling millions of tons of cargo. Today, the Port of New York and New Jersey processes around 6 million containers annually. Upstate's rivers provided water power, but not connectivity. The Hudson River effectively guaranteed downstate's rise as a global commercial hub while limiting upstate's long-term growth potential. In 1609, Henry Hudson explored the region. The Dutch quickly recognized the economic potential of the harbor at the mouth of the Hudson River. They founded New Amsterdam on Manhattan Island, establishing a fur trading center ideally positioned between the ocean and the interior. Upstate, however, remained firmly in the domain of the Haudenosaunee, one of the most powerful indigenous alliances in North America. European traders were allowed limited access, but large-scale settlement was restricted. For more than 150 years, the Dutch and later the British concentrated population and development in coastal and lower Hudson Valley regions while much of upstate remained an indigenous, controlled frontier. It was not until the Sullivan Expedition of 1779 during the American Revolution that the interior was forcibly opened to Euro-American settlement through the destruction of more than 40 Iroquois towns. By that time, downstate had already become an economic and political center. Upstate began its development much later, starting from a position far behind a rapidly growing New York City. Erie Canal made upstate rich then killed it. In 1825, the Erie Canal transformed upstate New York from wilderness into one of the economic powerhouses of early America. By linking Albany to Buffalo with a 363-mile artificial waterway, New York suddenly controlled the trade route between the Midwest and the Atlantic. Cities like Rochester, Utica, Syracuse, and Buffalo exploded. Rochester became Flower City, grinding Midwestern wheat with water-powered mills, Buffalo became a grain titan as barges flowed eastward. Syracuse developed the salt industry that supplied the entire nation. For about 30 years, upstate cities rivaled downstate in population and wealth. By the 1850s, railroads, many financed by New York City investors, slashed travel times and freight costs by nearly 90%. Suddenly, grain did not need to float through Rochester or Utica. It could travel directly to Manhattan's harbor. New York City became the final destination for goods, money, immigrants, and industry. The canal towns stagnated as rail corridors bypassed them. Upstate had enjoyed its golden era, but once railroads took over, the economic gravity shifted permanently to downstate. More than 12 million immigrants poured into New York City, while upstate received only crumbs. Between 1892 and 1954, Ellis Island processed them. Italians, Irish, Jews, Germans, Eastern Europeans, Puerto Ricans, and many others arrived. Roughly 80% stayed in New York City,
creating dense ethnic enclaves in Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, and later Queens. Each new wave reinforced the previous ones, with aunts sponsoring cousins, families running bakeries, tailors, construction crews, shipping firms, and restaurants. These communities created economic ecosystems so strong that millions of newcomers never felt the need to move elsewhere. Upstate, by contrast, received perhaps 5% of those newcomers. Buffalo gained Polish steelworkers. Rochester attracted some Germans and Jews. Binghamton got small waves of Southern Italians and Eastern Europeans. But upstate never experienced the tidal wave of immigration that reshaped New York City socially and economically. Without constant population renewal, its growth stagnated. Downstate's neighborhoods multiplied with new languages, businesses, and labor forces every decade. Upstate saw only slow, linear growth. Immigration made New York City a global hub, while upstate remained a regional one. $1 trillion New York City GDP versus upstate Rust Belt collapse. Today, the New York City metro area generates roughly $1.1 trillion in GDP, more than the entire economies of many countries. Wall Street, the United Nations, Madison Avenue, the tech sector, publishing, fashion, tourism, and media all pump money into the five boroughs and their suburbs. Downstate's economy is diversified, global, and constantly reinventing itself. Meanwhile, Upstate's economy followed the classic Rust Belt trajectory. Rochester collapsed when Kodak, once employing over 60,000 people, entered bankruptcy in 2012, wiping out tens of thousands of jobs. Buffalo Steel Belt imploded between 1970 and 1980 as U.S. manufacturing moved overseas. Syracuse lost General Electric and Carrier. Binghamton lost IBM. Utica lost its textile mills. Albany's high-tech corridor is growing, but not fast enough to offset decades of losses. While downstate surged ahead with finance, tech, entertainment, and services, upstate was left with aging industries, shrinking tax bases, and declining populations. The wealth gap widened until New York City became one of the richest metro areas on Earth, while parts of upstate became among the poorest in New York State. Transportation infrastructure is destiny, and downstate New York got the fast lane. The region is tied together by the Long Island Railroad, Metro North, New Jersey Transit, the New York City subway, and three international airports. Millions of commuters reach Manhattan from Long Island, the Lower Hudson Valley, and New Jersey in under an hour. Highways like Interstate 95, Interstate 495, and the Cross Bronx distribute people and goods at enormous scale. Upstate, however, moves at a different speed entirely. The Amtrak Empire service from Albany to New York City averages just 59 miles per hour one of the slowest intercity trains in America. Many upstate cities have only two or three trains per day. Highways like Interstate 81 and Interstate 90 stretch across vast distances, but heavy snow, ice, and maintenance costs slow everything. Buffalo's airport sees around 5 million passengers annually, compared to 60 million at John F. Kennedy International Airport alone. Infrastructure amplifies opportunity. Where mobility is fast, dense clusters form. Where mobility is slow, distances feel larger, and growth slows. Downstate's world-class connectivity fuels its economic dominance, while upstate's slower systems limit expansion and investment. Taxes plus blizzards equals Yoop State Exodus, 500,000 gone. Upstate New York has been losing population for decades. Between 2000 and 2025, the region lost roughly 523,000 residents, more than the entire city, of Kansas City. Buffalo fell from 580,000 people in 1950 to around 278,000 today, a staggering 52% decline. Syracuse, Rochester, Schenectady, Utica, and Binghamton share similar trajectories. The reasons form a brutal combination. Some of the highest state and local taxes in the United States, extremely high heating and maintenance costs, fewer high-paying job opportunities, decaying housing stock, long winters, and harsh weather, lack of immigration inflow, young people leaving for New York City, Boston, and beyond. About 62% of Cornell graduates move directly to the New York City metro area. Many never return. Upstate's population is older, slower growing, and increasingly concentrated in just a few mid-sized cities. Entire rural counties are shrinking, with towns losing grocery stores, hospitals, and tax revenue. Downstate continues to draw new residents, new companies, and new immigrants, 
widening the divide every decade. The real reason? Rivers plus ice doomed upstate. Strip away every detail, the blizzards, the taxes, the GDP gap, the rail maps, and it all returns to two ancient forces, rivers and ice. Glaciers crushed upstate soils, leaving behind rocks, acidic earth, lakes, and rugged terrain. Downstate, untouched by the same destruction, gained rich soils and a perfect natural harbor. The Hudson River became a 150 miles long deep water highway, funneling trade and people straight into Manhattan. Immigrants landed at Ellis Island, not Buffalo. The Erie Canal briefly elevated upstate, but railroads redirected wealth back toward the coast. Climate punished the North and spared the South. Infrastructure followed the money and the ports. Upstate never had a chance to compete with a region that had every natural and historical advantage stacked into one small corner. New York is fundamentally two states wearing one name, a global engine of commerce in the Southeast, and a vast, cold, sparsely populated interior shaped by ancient geology. Geography didn't just influence New York's story, it wrote the script.